Our scripture this morning is from the letter of James to the 12 tribes, chapter 1, verses 17 through 26. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that, and they shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and set them off in a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. The word of God for the people of God. And so I'd like to give you a little bit more in James as well, um, starting at 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that he should be a kind of firstfruits of his creatures. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing." If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Now over the next few weeks, we will be examining passages from the book of James. And when we read the scriptures that are there, and uh, the scriptures, there are times when we may struggle to understand what the words and the meanings are. We might struggle to understand what the meaning behind the imagery in a book like Revelations is. Well, we will not have that issue when we are studying James. You see, James is written to be shared with everyone. It is often thought of as this, James is to the New Testament what Proverbs is to the Old Testament. It is full of easy to understand information about how we should be living as followers of Christ. Now the overall uh, arching theme throughout James is faith in motion. As Judy read this morning, faith without deeds is a faith that is dead. And this is the idea that faith is not to be kept to oneself. We are to share our faith with others through our words, and even better, through our actions and our deeds. Now we see in verse 22 of the scripture that I read today, be doers of the word and not merely hearers of the word. And when we see that scripture, it becomes clear to us that James is going to advocate for us putting our faith 
into motion. Now, have you ever found yourself in a situation where you really needed to put your faith into practice? I'm guessing that you have. Well, let me tell you about something that happened this past week while we were on vacation and a chance for me to put my faith into practice. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Pastor, didn't you all go to the beach? Wasn't that where you were for vacation? You were not on some sort of mission trip. How could you have put your faith into practice? Well, sometimes putting our faith into practice is showing restraint. You see, James tells us, starting in verse 19, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Brothers and sisters, not just here in the church, but throughout the world, we have gotten very good at being slow to hear, quick to speak, and quick to anger. And we've gotten very good at not allowing the anger, uh, not allowing God's righteousness to be produced and acting out in our own anger as people. So as we arrived to the hotel that we stayed at on Friday night, I had the opportunity to put this into practice. After driving for about six and a half hours in much heavier traffic than we had anticipated driving in, and I have to tell you, I absolutely hate sitting in traffic. After dealing with my back seizing up the entire time that we were driving and being in quite a bit of pain, we finally arrived to the hotel and I was so relieved that I was going to be able to get out of the car. And I noticed that there was one parking spot left in the parking lot in our hotel. And I began to pull into that spot thanking the Lord that I would finally be able to get out of this car and get out and walk around. And then a man came running over. And this man was not a young man. Uh, this man was not uh, an elderly man. He was a middle-aged man. And he did not seem to have any sort of issue that would make me wonder why he was doing this. But he, became, he ran over as I was pulling in to the parking spot. And he stood in the middle of the parking spot. Don't get the wrong idea here, folks. He wasn't pulling in his car, and I didn't see him as he was pulling in his car. He wasn't standing there when I started to pull in and saving that spot for someone. No, he saw that I was pulling into the spot, and he ran across the parking lot and stood directly in the middle of the spot. Now, I must tell you, church, my initial thoughts were not very faith-based. <laughs> I was tired, and I was in pain, and I was ready to get out of that car. And what I wanted to say to that man would have probably peeled the paint off the side of the hotel. See, I sure didn't want to leave room for God's righteousness in that moment. I wanted to give him a big dose of the anger of man. But is that not what the world has taught us to do? If someone wrongs you, if someone takes away what you believe is yours, then you have the right to hurt them. That is what the world has been telling us to do. And I know the world would say that I'd have been justified if I'd have got out of that car and at the very least given this man a piece of my mind. And to be honest, I think he was expecting me to do so. See, he looked like he was expecting me to get out of the car and yell at him and perhaps even accost him. Brothers and sisters, I have to give God all the credit here. Because instead of acting out on my anger, God calmed me. He reminded me that my children were in the car with me. And that they would see how I would act towards this man. So I simply backed up turned around and looked for another spot out on the road instead of in the parking lot. Very confused, my kid said, where are we going? Why are we not pulling into that spot? Alan, to his credit, said, what's that guy doing? <laughs> but I looked around I, to them and I said, sometimes people aren't going to act right. Sometimes they're going to do things that will make us angry. 
but we always have a choice how we react to them. We always have a choice to do what we know is right, even when they do what we think is wrong. Now, I do not tell you this story to say, look at me, I am so righteous. I tell you this story because I truly believe that my faith in God allowed me to stop from making a huge mistake. I tell you this story because I want to praise God for allowing me to teach my children in a difficult situation. And I tell you this story because I want you to know that God is with you in those moments. When you want to act out in anger, he is still there with you. And he is gently calling you to allow him to find the righteousness in those situations. Now, as we circled around the parking lots, the people that were with him came and they parked their car. And I noticed that as they parked the car, there was an older lady in the front seat of the car. So chances are he was saving the seat so she, or the spot so she wouldn't have to walk as far to the hotel. But you see, even in a high pressure situation like this, and I have to tell you, it's honestly one of the top 10 moments in my life where I wanted to explode in anger. God found a way to bless me. See, it is amazing what he can do. It is amazing how he can bless us, especially when we're living out our faith and not just simply hearing our faith. Somewhere along the lines, we've adopted this idea that good things come to those who wait. And while, yes, we are to have patience, as we don't always know or understand God's timing in all things, that does not give us an excuse to simply sit back and wait in all things. As Methodists, we do not subscribe to the idea that all those that will ever be saved have already been marked by God. We believe that it is our duty to take the gospel to those that we meet. And we believe that it is our duty to do our best in living out the teaching that Christ has for our lives. Our calling as a church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And we can only do this when we are living out our faith. I will remind you of the words of John Wesley here. Do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. You see, our calling is to do these good things in the world, not in our name, but in the name of Jesus Christ. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, what proof do you have to show that God gives blessings to those that are willing to act in his name? You know, other than you being able to teach your kids a lesson on vacation. Well, we only need to look to the scriptures to find examples of how God blessed those that were willing to act in his name. As Judy read today about Abraham, Abraham becomes the patriarch of the Israelites because he's willing to move his family to a faraway country when God called him to. Moses is able to lead his people out of slavery because he is willing to confront Pharaoh when God called him to. David, remembering God and his blessings of the past, he is, he is able to slay a giant. When Mary said yes to God, she became the mother of the Savior of the whole world. And Jesus, willingly dying on the cross for our sins, allowed us all to have salvation. You see, we find numerous accounts of the people of God putting their faith into action, and we see the blessings that they and their people reap because of their faith in action. So the question that we must ask ourselves today is this, are we doers when it comes to our faith? Or are we simply hearers? Well, I think by and large, and I say uh, we by and large, because I include myself in this, we are hearers that want to be doers. And what do I mean by that? We hear the word of God. We hear his calling on our lives. But we do indeed struggle at times to live out those callings. 
Perhaps we say to ourselves, I am too old to be a doer of my faith anymore. Well, I assure you, Abraham was older. Perhaps we say to ourselves, I will be a doer when I have more time. God does not call for your last fruits. He calls for your first fruits, meaning he doesn't want the least of your time and effort. He wants the best of your time and effort. Perhaps you are worried that if you begin to be a doer of your faith, you will be persecuted by others. Well, blessed are the persecuted for righteousness' sake, because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Maybe you just don't know how to get started. Well, there are opportunities to serve here in the church and if you'd like to know more, I encourage you to talk to me or someone on the leadership council to hear about them. And if you find yourself passionate about doing something in the name of God, and we are not currently pursuing it here, I'd love to hear about it. And I'd love to see what we can do to help you pursue the, that thing that you're passionate about. Now, finally, we must address this idea when it comes to this scripture that we read today, and it is this. Am I doing enough if I just come to church on Sunday? Well, brothers and sisters, the answer is most likely a yes and a no. You see, I will never tell you that coming to church is not important. I will never tell you that being in community with one another is not a way that you worship God or a way that you act out in your faith. But... We need to think about this. We come together each week to worship God with song, with prayer, scripture, and a message. And that is part of being a doer, but it is just the start of being a doer. See, if we come here on a Sunday, and then we turn around on Monday through Saturday, and we ignore our faith, and we take no more action until we come back again on Sunday, well, that is a faith that is very weak indeed. So let us not find ourselves in that situation. Let us be doers of our faith and not just hearers of our faith. And so this week, I challenge you to do at least one thing every day that shows your faith in action. And I challenge you to also remember to thank God when he blesses you because of your faith in action. Amen.